On a Midwestern University campus where thousands seem to blend in, one man in red athletic shorts and some retro Nike shoes sure seems to stand out. In his personal life, 46-year-old Hall of Fame footbagger Derek Fogel may just seem like your average everyday Joe. But anyone that has seen the man kicking that hacky sack on campus knows the man is pure electricity. I actually uh, was introduced to footbag in the summer of 1981. I was like between my junior and senior year, year in high school, uh, spending my summer up in the mountains of Colorado, going to a party with my brother, and there's you know a circle of guys sort of spilling beer all over each other, you know, trying to kick this thing around. What in the world are you doing? Oh, we're playing hacky sack. You want to try? So I was like, yeah, whatever. I stood in the circle, and I was terrible when I first started. I was just genuinely just swinging a miss, swinging a miss. But the thing was that it was it was the first time I'd ever been introduced to like a uh, like kind of a almost sport or you know activity like that that was really non-competitive. We all just stood in a circle together and had fun. The University of Missouri campus is Derek's athletic battlefield. And Derek comes to work packing a boombox, a water jug, and a barrage of hacky sacks. His bike serves as his primary means of transportation from one site to the next. I believed in footbag. It did so much for me. It really, you know, turned my life around and gave me a spark of passion and desire and, you know, understanding that, that you really had to work hard at something to get good at something. And, you know, it was, it was like a, you know, a, a saving grace in my life. And... I wanted to share that with everybody. In my personal life, you know, I'm just a, a systems administrator for the university. I'm actually a pretty quiet guy. I, yeah. you know, go about my job. You know, it's like a, and and you know, I'm wearing, you know, business clothes all the time. Footbag is kind of like the yin and the yang, or or the other way around. However, it, it is, you know, this wild, crazy, exhibitionist thing yes. I do, yeah. kind of as kind of as an escape from the rest of you know, the, the very much quieter rest of the life I lead, I guess. While watching Derek Footbag, I quickly realized the man wasn't just hacking the sack. Seemed to me like it was dancing. Oftentimes, Derek would change the song on his iPod over and over until he found a song with the correct beat to truly energize his footbagging performance. When I stopped competing, I kind of lost my zeal for the technical difficulty side of it, but I've always just wanted to, you know, I've always been in love with the, with the choreography side of it, the, the dancing and, the, and just the, the movement, the music and the timing and that kind of thing. Derek's skills obviously seemed advanced. I asked him about his accomplishments. Within a couple of years of, of uh, getting into footbag, I eventually found a footbag competition in Kansas City and and I managed to win like the first ever freestyle competition I ever tried, which was really cool. Yeah. Of course, the very first original thing was just consecutives. How many times can you kick it without missing? And uh, I kind of was in the group of the first people that really pushed the envelope on that. I uh, set. Uh, I was nearly at a world record with my personal best of two, 20,004. There was another guy that did uh, like 21,000 that day at that tournament, so I actually took second at that tournament, and I, that's, that was the best uh, marathon rally I ever had. Um, and uh, then when we could kick that long without missing, they started putting time limits on us. So, okay, how many can you do in five minutes? And I set one of the first world records for the five minute timed consecutives at like 757 kicks. And I've basically taken like regional titles. I've taken a sixth place and I think an eighth place in world competitions. I've never won a worlds in freestyle, but I've always been pretty much in the top 10. The amount of concentration and athleticism involved in each rally transformed Derek into a zen-like master of his own craft. 
I soon recognized just how much Derek turned hacky sack into an awe-inspiring art form. You know, what I'm doing today in terms of the complexity of my total body control, even if I'm not doing six and seven ad moves, I'm still exhibiting a level of body control and a level of, of timing, you know, to uh, and movement to music that, you know, a lot of the other guys, you know, they've got incredible moves, but they, they're not timing the music. After following Derek for some time, I began to realize how much of a footbag guru he truly was. He seemed to draw in spectators with ease, and what was even more was the way that he fed off their energy when he performed. A lot of times, see, when the students are out here, they really pump me up and give yeah. me a lot of extra energy, and you know, give me that little kick I need to try just a little bit yeah. harder, and, and you know, it's like hit those shots of some of them I was missing today. But uh, you know, it's like every time I get to come out and kick, whether I do good or whether I do bad, it's like a gift. You know, it's like I've been kicking for almost 30 years. And, it, you know, at this point in my life, I've, you know, I competed, I've, you know, gotten, held world records, but just getting out here and getting to play and the sunshine is just, there's nothing like it. You know, I got really used to being out in the public places and playing and that kind of thing. But, you know, I, I really do, I get out there just to make sure that people do see footbag and do know about footbag and, you know, hopefully, you know, most of the time, the kids just hang at, hang around and watch me. Every now and then, they come and play with me. And you know, it's like the last time I got a circle going, all the kids were busting out little tricks like around the world or this or you know, cross body stall or something. So you know, the kids are are doing it. I you know, I think a lot of times they let me play because they realize I you know really do like just kicking. One day at the rec center, I was able to catch up with a couple of kids that had just observed Derek's hacky sack rallies. Like the stuff he does, like, it take years and years to practice all that stuff, so, yeah, it's real impressive. I, uh, I don't think I could ever do that without spending hours and hours a day. I think what Derek is doing is really cool. Um, he's, like, kicking it up against the wall, and then he's catching it, and then, like, moving it all around in these like, weird ways that I feel like someone his age should not be doing, or I don't even know how he's doing it. I think he's definitely making a statement here on the Zeus campus. As Derek's story began to unfold, I became more and more intrigued by Derek's intense emotional passion for the sport. Derek seemed to be pushing for something more. It seemed he had a mission or a message for society. You know, I'd write articles for the other, you know, the national magazine called Footbag World. And then I started running footbag tournaments and I ran a, uh, a footbag club in Kansas City Ooh. for about 10 years and, you know, ran tournaments in uh, September of 2008. I kind of got this idea that I was going to start basically a blog about my footbag experiences and I picked this user ID that that is represents what I am it's a the computer hacker spelling of hacky sacker because I do computing but you know as a living but I play hacky sack as a as a love of life Derek's supplemental contributions in exposing hacky sack to the world are truly what set him apart from other hall of fame athletes Derek can often be seen documenting his guerrilla style footbacking experiences with his home video camera. I wanted to know more about what drove this passion of his. Primarily what I, one of the things I want to do is have a uh, kind of a, a history of, of what footbag, you know, how, how I deal with footbag in terms of the aging process. I'm 46 years old, I've been playing footbag for yeah. almost 30 years. I've got this drive to capture you know the end you know the end part of that essentially capture how long can I keep playing you know what can I do even when I'm 50 years old you know what am I going to be able to do out there with the footbag just what does the future have in store for this footbag phenom Derek once told me he wanted to change the world with footbag I for one wanted a little first-hand piece of the action you know, I spent a lot of years of my life promoting footbag competing in with footbag and doing everything I could you know, and, and eventually as I got older and, you know, it's like, you know, got a family and get time constraints and uh, so one day I kind of realized that, you know, hecky sack isn't going to be everybody's salvation. It was mm -hmm. my salvation. So, should we just let this elusive master of the hacky sack ride off into the sunset? For now, let's just let the man kick.